Charles Leclerc has suggested that Ferrari has some issues when it comes to finding more performance and pace out of the car. And from a championship contender, the team has slowly but surely fell to the fourth fastest car on the grid, with the upgrades not working as expected. But with Norris now establishing himself as the second fastest driver on the team, and with clashes in Austria not being able to be capitalised by Leclerc, who is third in the drivers' championship, can this haunt Ferrari in the long term? now that Mercedes has joined the fight for the top three teams on the grid. It goes without saying that a lot of hope was invested in Ferrari's upgrades for the 2024 season, especially after winning the Monaco GP and introducing a B version of their car in Imola. However, McLaren's steps seem to have been a lot bigger and now they're definitely the second or even the fastest car on the grid, with Ferrari losing the momentum not only to the Woking base squad but to Mercedes as well. Obviously, the upgrades did not seem to be working as expected and one of the primary reasons reasons is that adding downforce has re-triggered an old issue of porpoising, something that a team from Mercedes caliber has managed to get away from their car in proper time. Therefore, Leclerc sent a fierce warning to his team that they need to be on top of their issues because we're currently in the middle of the development war and small steps are crucial to improve the path of the car to the extent of jumping from P5 to P1 in certain occasions. We've seen that in Barcelona, Mercedes didn't actually bring a new floor but only made modifications to the old one and all of a sudden they managed to be on the podium for the second time in Montreal following it up with a win in Austria. Be that as it may, Ferrari are definitely dropping the ball and Leclerc is having none of it. And when talking about this to a further extent, the Monegasque driver went on to say, Our car has been struggling in the high speed. We've been struggling a bit this weekend, so let's see where we are next weekend with the high speed. But we've been struggling a bit more than what I would have expected on the high speed. Every issue is something that we need to tackle as quickly as possible, but in Formula 1, it doesn't take that quick quick to fix those issues. Before putting those upgrades on one specific issue, we have to get a little bit of time and unfortunately in a race, even if the season is 24 races long, we still need to be back as quick as possible because there are very valuable points that we are losing against our competitors. This has been something that the F1 experts have also raised their concerns when Ferrari announced that part of the Silverstone upgrades would be rushed for Barcelona, saying that in pursuit of gaining performance as fast as as possible, the team might lose what is the most important thing, the right trajectory. With McLaren, we've seen that there is no place that they've been lacking in the last couple of races, and they are definitely the top contender right next to Red Bull, arguably contending for the Constructors' Championship, given the fact that Perez is quite the liability in Red Bull, and Ferrari have met all of these issues in the past couple of races. A similar view was shared by Carlos Sainz as well. He went on to say, Unfortunately, we are not good at high-speed corners. At the same time, we bounce, which makes our performance in that type of corner exaggeratedly slow. The innovations work in all the areas where we don't have bouncing. The problem is that what we gain in those points, we lose in others due to bouncing. The primary goal for Ferrari was to introduce more downforce to the car thanks to the floor, but it seems like the rush they've done in the past couple of races led to the fact that they did not understand the upgrade process at all. And as we are headed into Silverstone, the Maranello base team has effectively established themselves as the fourth fastest team on the grid if we are to judge at the last four races starting from Montreal. This is a massive drop off if you consider that the team had won the Monaco GP and was extremely close in the rest of the races due to the tyre management. But with all that's happening right now during qualifying and the margins being as close as one tenth per second, it's worth noting that even small adjustments from Ferrari could see them back at the top. The issue that Ferrari has encountered was not with the amount of downforce that they've added to the car thanks to the new floor, it was the backfired results they got in the form of porpoising and bouncing as well as losing stability. In Barcelona, this was very visible and in Austria, a track on which Leclerc dominated in 2022, the team was nowhere to be found on pure racing manner 
Ghana as they were clearly the fourth fastest team on the grid. All of this points towards the fact that a lot of work needs to be done in Maranello and these setbacks in a time when Hamilton is supposed to be joining the team from 2025 onwards are the last thing that Ferrari needs. And the effort that Vasseur has done in order to bring back Ferrari to this level of competitiveness is not something that should be overlooked. However, it seems like the team is now dropping the ball to teams that were considered to be fighting in the midfield for the remainder of the season, and that includes Mercedes. However, Wolf himself has a lot of praise for what type of work Vasseur has done in Ferrari, and when talking about this in a greater extent, the Austrian went on to say, Fred and I have been friends since the early 2000s when he was just setting up his Formula 3 team, and I was looking after a few of these young drivers, and we've gone back a long way, and the friendship is tight, and the trust is there, and nothing's going to change that ever. I think it would be wrong for me and patronising for me to say whether the job is good or not not that he has done. From the outside, what I see is the team seems to be much more structured and no BS approach. And Fred has always been like that. You can't tell him a story because he is going to see right through it. And there is a reason why the team has started to win races and competing for a Constructors and Drivers World Championship. This, however, is not the realistic picture of what we're seeing from Ferrari in the past couple of weeks, especially because the team is now seemingly out of touch with their car, something that not many anticipated would happen given the fact that the Maranello squad have started the season with a bit of a conservative approach which would have enabled them to mount upgrades and widen the operating window of the car in a greater extent than Red Bull who have seemed to narrow it down with the new approach of the car. All of that is now irrelevant because it's looking like Ferrari are having genuine issues with correlating what they are seeing on the simulator and what they are implementing on the track. This is something that Leclerc has struggled with throughout the qualifying process in Austria where he sent the car to the absolute maximum and that resulted with him going extremely wide between turn 9 and 10 in what would have been a lap for P3. Regardless, it wasn't guaranteed that he would have fought for a race win due to the lack of pace and that is an issue that Ferrari needs to work on sooner rather than later. Furthermore, Sainz has clearly stated his intention of not being the good Samaritan and play the ultimate game just because he is leaving the team at the end of the year. He also needs to find a place for himself and while his actions in Montreal and Barcelona might have pushed teams like Williams to think in another direction, Sainz knows what he brings to the table now that Alpine has emerged as a realistic contender for his signature. Obviously, a lot is on the table for Ferrari because if they manage to bring the car to the optimal window, they'll be contending for race wins again sooner rather than later. But if they continue on this downward trajectory, there will be a lot of people to explain to as to why the car has gone in a backward way. With all this in mind, do you think that Ferrari does have what it takes in order to fight for the championship again? And more importantly, do you think that the team has gone backwards with their upgrades? Let us know in the comments below. And once you do that, make sure to check out the video that's appearing on your screen right now.